1985, I went to work in a statewide public school program for children on the autism spectrum, and I was hired as a public school speech language pathologist. My dilemma was I was assigned a caseload of preschool children, two, three, and four years of age, and these were kids who were all new to intervention. Uh, the majority of them, when they walked in the school, didn't talk. They didn't have any speech. They didn't have any form of communication. So my dilemma was, how are they going to communicate? I tried the traditional speech imitation training protocols, and it was very difficult for the majority of my kids to acquire any reliable sound production. So I started looking for alternative forms of communication. We tried sign language. We had issues with fine motor skills. Uh, and the understandability of sign outside their classroom or outside of our therapy sessions. I then tried some picture-based communication systems, and my experience had been working with kids with cerebral palsy and picture point-based communication systems, so I thought I would try that with some of my kids too. Um, the first problem I encountered was these kids don't point, so I had trouble getting them to use a single finger to point to a picture. I also had trouble with Kids who did learn to point would point to a picture and I wasn't there to watch it. Um, so one day I was working with a really um, difficult young man and I had asked Andy to come in and sit in with me in the classroom. We were essentially problem solving what was happening. This was a little boy who really, really wanted Hot Wheel cars and Matchbox cars. So that's what I was teaching him to point to a picture of either Matchbox cars or raisins was the other thing he wanted. So I had those two pictures on his communication board. He couldn't point, so he hit the whole board. And uh, sometimes his hand hit both pictures at once, and I had to interpret the Hot Wheel car or the raisin you wanted right now. And he would get really upset if I misinterpreted. Sometimes he would hit the communication board and I didn't see it happen. Um, so there were lots of problems with not seeing when he was communicating, him not, being aware that I needed to be part of the interaction while he communicated. So what Andy and I decided to do was, number one, cut the pictures up, isolate them, give him one picture at a time. And in order to make it communicative, what we decided to do was rather than have him point to the picture of the Matchbox car, we actually had him pick up the picture and give it to somebody. And that was when it became communicative for him because what he learned was, I interact with somebody who has what I want by giving them a picture and I get what they have. So what we then decided to do was expand this protocol a little bit because basically what we realized was pointing to a picture on a communication board can be done in isolation. It doesn't require anybody to be around for a child to point to a picture on the communication board. But communication has to involve two people. There has to be the one delivering the message and the listener or the communicative partner, the one who's receiving the message. And what makes a behavior communicative is when a child does something to somebody else who then provides them with what they wanted. And with this little guy, what he wanted was his matchbox cars. So what he learned was, give this picture to Lori, I get a matchbox car, and the world was a happy place for him all of a sudden. And um, part of what Lori then did was start to work with other children, um, getting them to be able to communicate in this interactive manner right from the beginning. So the only thing we actually needed to know about a youngster was what did he or she like. We didn't need to do any other prerequisite training. Over time, we started to expand the skills to move on from using a single picture to making discriminations to creating short sentences and then moving on to commenting. And we worked together in terms of trying to come up with not only what skills should we teach, but what were the best behavioral teaching strategies to use to get those skills um, to be acquired rapidly and to generalize to different people in different situations. Uh, we very rapidly saw that while not all children needed to use PECs to start to learn to communicate, um, it was a very effective strategy with many of the very young children. And what was unique about the PECs protocol was the interactive component of it. Uh, it was the first augmentative alternative communication system, picture-based communication system that inherently required two people because the child had to give the picture to somebody else. And that was essentially 
um, our aha moment in using picture-based communication with kids who are on the autism spectrum. And what was also interesting about the early um, years of PEX was Andy's a behavior analyst, I'm a speech language pathologist, and bringing both professions into the development of a protocol I think really helped to uh, fine-tune what the protocol became over the next many, many years. So PEX is a system now that's manualized, it's divided into six phases, um, kids progress through the six phases, and what we also discovered in the early years of PEX was a lot of our kids, our young kids, uh, while they were using PEC, started talking. And that wasn't something we set out to do. It was something that was a really nice side effect. Um, that's something that's been worn out in the research and in the last 25 years of the PEX protocol is the, the, the big number of children, uh, the young children who do develop speech. And the other observation uh, that we made over time was there was no need to wait for children to fail at another communication modality before trying PECs. We did not need to wait one month, three months, six months for a child to fail to speak before we started to teach communication. We could work on PECs from the beginning while simultaneously doing everything we could to get vocalization and speech going. So the moment the child walked in the door, the only prerequisite skill was we had to know what he wanted. Um, and once we knew that he wanted something and we made him aware that we were the ones who had what he wanted, PEX was very, very easy for the majority of the kids that point forward.